One of the most important things you can do to uh, keep your smart uh, CDI diesel running well is uh, attend to the intake manifold uh, pressure sensor. That's this thing right here. Or it's just a, a map sensor. It measures uh, manifold pressure. So the problem with these is uh, it has a little hose going to it. And uh, these cars, when they get a few miles on them, or even, I don't know, maybe even new, I never had one new, but uh, the, the venting from the crankcase system, there's a little, like where it comes out right here, there's a little screen in there, I imagine. Uh, there'd be a plate, and then under the plate, there's a little screen to keep the oil from coming out the crankcase uh, hose there, and then into the intake. And then once it gets into the intake, the oil vapor uh, goes into the intercooler, settles in the low spots in the intercooler, comes up the intake, and uh, settles in the low spots in the intake. And then uh, after a while, you get a little bit of that oil in this hose. Uh, that uh, su supplies uh, 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 manifold pressure to the uh, intake uh, manifold pressure sensor. So there's just that hose there uh, that goes into the uh, sensor and that's the only sensor that's on the intake on this. So if your car is uh, misfiring at mid-range or it's like stuttering, that could be what that is. It could be uh, it got a little bit of oil in the in the pressure hose there, and uh, it's not uh, reading the pressure accurately. So just as an example, uh, what's going on in there, I got a, a clear hose with some oil in it. So, so the map sensor sits up high, hose goes down low on the intake somewhere. Kind of a stupid design, why couldn't they put the hose on the top of the manifold instead of on the bottom of the manifold to collect that oil? Uh, so anyway, that's what's going on. So the hose is sitting like that with a little bit of oil in it, and then you apply pressure to it. And you're not getting, it's not here, I do it with my, without my finger in the way. And you're not getting the appropriate pressure to the map sensor. So even though uh, the pressure from uh, uh, the manifold may be making that uh, bit of oil in there move, it's not the same as if it's open to the manifold. Where, whereas when you're at idle, there's a vacuum. When the turbocharger comes on, there's pressure. So you're, it's not getting an accurate reading, especially at idle. So uh, if this is going on on your car, and I suspect is going on with all the smarts that are out there, uh, at least a, a, a large majority of them. This car did start getting bad, like uh, it would run really good at highway speed or when you're really giving it. Uh, but mid-range, so anything over like uh, 12, 1200 RPM to 2100 RPM, it would, it would stutter and misfire and uh, wouldn't necessarily notice it uh, except for like a hesitation when I was driving uh, before I put the straight pipe on it. But now as soon as the straight pipe is on there, I can, I can hear it misfiring. So uh, yeah, this map sensor plays a, a big role in uh, how uh, uh, decent the engine runs. Well, I, I suspect it ties in with timing as well uh, because it, it, it wasn't like it was just lack of power, which if it, if it uh, just affected the fuel trim, as you're driving, it just wouldn't have the power in that range if it wasn't getting the proper pressure. It was actually like misfiring and uh, acting weird. So uh, the sensor data must tie into uh, timing as well, the uh, injector pulse timing. So uh, yeah, the map sensor is very important. I had this car in town when I started noticing it was doing that. And uh, I, I had stole the map sensor out of that one because that one ran like a top, you know, I uh, rev it up and uh, you know, it wouldn't sputter or anything. So I, I took the map sensor out of it and I uh, put it in this one. I, I went down there and I disconnected the hose. So I disconnected the hose. If you're lucky enough, if you're lucky enough to get the plastic clip, so it's just a little, uh, I don't know, like an alligator clip. I don't know what you call it. It's the 
two teeth in line with one another there. And then so to get that one off, you just uh, raise one side of the clip off, uh, raise one side of the clip up, and then, uh, you know, it uh, can separate. So here, I'll try to get it apart. Just like that. So one side of the clip goes up and the other side goes down and then you can just uh, undo the undo the clamp. This little hose does see a little does see a fair amount of pressure when the uh, turbocharger comes on so you don't want it leaking uh, because it is such a, a, a crucial part to your car running well. You don't want it to be uh, blowing out any pressure and not getting uh, the proper pressure reading. Uh, so if you if you cut the hose and then you you put your sensor in there, make sure you have some kind of a clamp on there. Uh, you could even just get some wire, do a double loop of the wire and then twist it up and then that'll keep it uh, tight on there. So I got the clamp off. Uh, be very careful with the, with the nipple on there. Very, uh, very tiny nipple. Uh, I actually broke the, broke it off when I was taking it off the other car. Uh, this one's a 2005 and it has the, the plastic uh, clamp on there. That one's a 2006 and it had a, a metal metal clip on there. And what you got, just, it's the same amount, same type of clip as that's on here. So you got to get on the edge and uh, with your screwdriver and just pry the clamp apart. And then if you can get your hands on one of these little plastic clips, that'd be uh, ideal those work pretty good especially if you got to change it out or blow the oil out of it again uh, so I got the clamp off And I got the hose off. See, here's where I repaired it because I broke the little uh, nipple off. And uh, I tried undoing the nut on that side and it uh, twisted the rubber off. So I'll put a dab of silicone on there when I go tighten it back down and that'll hold it together. So, and that's all there is to it. It's just the hose that comes from underneath the intake and it uh, provides uh, pressure to the map sensor or to the intake manifold pressure sensor as Mercedes, call Mercedes calls it. What I'm gonna do is uh, start it up. And I'm gonna see if any oil blows out of there. It'll, it's gonna run really crappy, but I'll see if it blows out any oil. When I had it in the city, uh, I had uh, I took it off and I changed out the sensor and it ran a lot better. But I also put my mouth on there and I blew the oil out of the pipe. And uh, I think a little bit came back in. So I'm gonna start it up and I'm gonna see if any oil comes out. So nothing spraying out of there at idle. I'll give it a, a good rev and uh, build some turbo pressure and I'll see if it blows anything out. Yeah, it's running like it did before before I blew the pipe out. So when it has zero uh, pressure going to the map map sensor, this is how it runs. You get uh, a lot of smoke at idle and you get uh, a lot of uh, uh, unburnt fuel at mid-range. So it's not running very good in other words. And look at that, it blew some oil out of that pipe. So yeah, that's definitely what's going on. Yeah, so I'm gonna get the air compressor and I'm gonna blow that pipe out. Oh, there, yeah, so frig. The hose is right there. The hose comes out right there. So how stupid is that? I have a big, a big loop with the hose underneath the yeah so a big loop with the hose underneath the manifold underneath the bracketry there and then uh, it just gets oil settled in the bottom of it and then you don't get a proper uh, sensor reading 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull that hose so it's routed up over the top. And uh, maybe I'll have to mount that uh, sensor a little bit differently. We'll see. So I'm still not happy with the hose routing. So I think what I'm going to do is root it, uh, root it the same way it was. Uh, the only difference being uh, I'm going to stick a zip tie underneath the wiring bus there or the wiring uh, shielding. So I'll just zip tie it up so it doesn't loop down on the bottom. And then uh, we'll see how that works. I don't want to change the length of the hose because that changes the volume. Uh, it may or may not have a, an effect on it. It's uh, So when the engine was uh, programmed, uh, they programmed it with the map sensor in there and this length of hose. So if you change the length of hose, that changes the amount of volume inside the hose. So then when uh, it's idling or when it's starting, you may get a, a slower uh, uh slower response from the map sensor you know like it, it's tuned to recognize this amount of delay so if it's uh, uh you rev it up it takes so much time to pressure it up and get the pro appropriate reading with the map sensor uh you know same at idle when uh, you know you step on it and it creates a vacuum it takes so long for the map sensor to uh, register that vacuum if your hose is bigger like if you decide oh i'm gonna mount this over here somewhere and you put a bigger hose on there while well, it may not uh, have the correct uh, reading when it needs it. Eventually it will have the correct reading as it would with this one, but it will just take longer to read it. That's all. I don't know. May or may not have an effect. So, but anyway, I'm going to keep the hose the same length. And, uh, yeah, just route it the same way and then I'm just going to zip tie it because I, I don't see a better way of routing, uh, routing it. Uh, if I route it over, then the hose is kinked there. If I route it under, it still has that uh, uh, low spot that collects oil and then plugs the pl plugs the pipe off. Uh, if I go over top, then it's kind of a kind of a steep turn underneath the map sensor. Hmm. I got it uh, coming up over the wiring harness there and uh, down uh, and back up into the sensor. Hey, that works. So I got it beside the wiring bus there. Hey, yeah, that's perfect. Here's my hose. Here's my hose coming out of the manifold. Uh, it goes up and it's uh, sitting on top of the uh, the frame, the metal, the metal frame, the, the mounting for all these hoses here and for the wiring harness. So uh, before it was routed underneath, uh, that could have been the problem. Maybe somebody uh, worked on it and routed it uh, underneath. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll look to see what that uh, that other one is underneath. Also, yeah, that's the way Mercedes routes it. So Mercedes routes it underneath that wire, underneath that uh, metal frame for the wiring and the hoses. But there's a spot it can sit on top of there, nice and loose. It's not going to get kinked. So yeah, that works great. So that'll keep the hose up a little bit and uh, avoid getting oil in it. So yeah, I'm gonna reconnect the hose that way. Cool. And maybe I'll trim a little bit off it too, just so there's not so much hose there. So then it sits at uh, about the right level as that uh, uh, metal, uh, metal attachment there. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just snip a little bit off it so it sits a little bit higher. And then uh, reattach it and we'll see how it runs. Uh, damn it. So I plug the new map sensor in. It's uh, it's not a Bosch, it's just a, a, a Chinese uh, copy. Uh, and the, the pins inside must not have been aligned and I jammed it on there really hard. And it's possible those pins aren't as strong as the, the genuine Mercedes one. You know, the pins in there are probably pretty strong just for that reason. So I plugged it in there and then I started it up and I was like, why is it running like there's no map sensor attached? And then uh, I pulled it off and I looked inside and yeah, sure enough, I squished the pins. So I'm going to have to put the old one back on. Don't uh, blow it out with a whole lot of pressure because it is a little rubber hose. So I don't need a lot of pressure, just enough to evacuate any kind of oil that's in there.
so I'll plug the old one back in and we'll see what it sounds like with the map sensor actually working. And then it's a good idea to try to snap that clip back in without it attached and then you can squeeze it together because it does uh, uh, go in there pretty hard. You got to uh, push on it pretty good for it to uh, lock in place. So just when you snap it in, check it, make sure it's locked in because it takes a fair amount of force to get it to go in there. And uh, if you're pushing on those rubbers, you could tear off the one side like I did there. But I tore that off by trying to loosen it off. And what's in the way here? Oh, my clip. Okay, so I guess that clamp has to be facing a certain way or else it hits on there. So that clamp has to be uh, facing forward to the to the connection. Or else it hits on the mount. Okay. Okay, so I got the hose blowed up, blown out and I got uh, a map sensor that's uh, fairly decent. And the connection is holding strong, it's not popping off there. So uh, I'll go start it and we'll see uh, how it runs. sensor installed uh, the hose for the map sensor is blown out so uh, see how it runs